In this video, we're going to go through three step conversions. Now, in the previous video, we went through how to go from grams of one substance to grams of another. That was actually a three step conversion. So, in this video, what's going to be different is we might be going from grams to particles, or particles to grams, or particles to particles. It depends. So, we're going to be relying on our flowchart to help us navigate through these types of problems. So it's asking us to go from, let's see, it says how many grams of lithium carbonate are needed to produce five grams of lithium chloride? So this one is just like the ones in our previous video. We're gonna go from grams to grams. So we're going from lithium carbonate to, sorry, we have lithium chloride and we're going from lithium to carbonate. Okay. So, step number one, let's write out what we're given. So we have 5.0 grams of lithium chloride. We need the molar mass of lithium chloride to be able to convert that. So our first step is to go from grams to moles, and we need that molar mass. All right, let's see, lithium is 6.94, chlorine is 35.45. So add those together and you get 42.39 grams per mole. All right, so we're gonna plug that in. So 42.39 grams of lithium chloride for every one mole of lithium chloride. Step number two in our three-step problem is to use our mole ratio to go from lithium chloride to lithium carbonate. Now, if you notice, oops, if you notice there isn't a number in front of this. There's like an imaginary one anytime there is not a number. So let's see, we have for every two moles, of lithium chloride, we have one mole of lithium carbonate. So let's see, oops, getting a little uh, lazy here. So grams of lithium chloride will cancel, and now moles of lithium chloride will cancel. All right, so now we're going from moles of lithium carbonate to grams of lithium carbonate. We're gonna use that molar mass again. So the molar mass of lithium carbonate, let's see we've got lithium, which is 6.94, and there are two of those. We have copper, not copper, carbon, 12.01. Uh, and then we have oxygen. There are three of those, and each one is 16. So when you add that all up, I get 73.89 grams per mole. So let's see, for every one mole of lithium carbonate, we have 73.89 grams of lithium carbonate. All right, and I get, let's see, 4.3577. I see two significant figures here. So I want two sig figs in my final answer. So going from left to right and looking at that third number, this is going to be four 0.4 grams of lithium carbonate. Not too bad, right? Just follow the flow chart. The flow chart is your friend. All right, this example is a little different. In this example, we're going from molecule, it's asking how many molecules we can produce, which are particles, from 10.6 grams of something else. So our first step 
is just like what we've been doing. We're going to use the molar mass to go from grams to moles. So 10.6 grams of magnesium chloride. We're going to need the molar mass of magnesium chloride. So we've got magnesium, which is 24.31. And then we have chlorine. There's two of those. Each one is 35.45. And I got 95.21 grams per mole. All right, so let's plug that in. So 95.21 grams of magnesium chloride for every one mole of magnesium chloride. Okay, next step is no different, moles to moles. So we're going to use that mole ratio. So we're going from magnesium chloride to aluminum chloride. So our ratio is 3 to 2. So for every 3 moles of magnesium chloride, we have 2 moles of aluminum chloride. All right, our final step, we're going to use Avogadro's number to go from moles. I accidentally crossed off the wrong thing. I just noticed that. Uh, we're going to use Avogadro's number to go from moles of aluminum chloride to uh, molecules of aluminum chloride. So for every one mole of aluminum chloride, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Now you can see here why it's important we don't abbreviate because moles and molecules, if I were to abbreviate molecules as M-O-L, it would be easy to confuse those with moles. And they're not the same thing. All right, so when I crunch the numbers on my calculator, I get 4.46815 times 10 to the 22nd. Oh boy, that's a big number. So we have, let's see, three significant figures. Going from left to right, let's underline the first three significant digits and then look at the fourth. So we're going to round up or round down? Of course, we're going to round up. This is going to be 4. 0.47. Don't forget the times 10 to the 22nd. And our units are going to be molecules of, uh, what are we going to? This is aluminum chloride. All right. In the third example, it says, how many grams can be produced from 5.3 times 10 to the 23rd atoms? So we're given particles this time, and we want to go to grams. Okay, so always start with what you're given. 5.3 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum to take those atoms and turn them into moles of aluminum, we're going to use Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum in one mole of aluminum. Next, we're going to go from moles of aluminum to moles of <clears throat> excuse me, of magnesium. So our ratio is two moles of aluminum to three moles of magnesium. So our moles of aluminum will cancel. And finally, it's asking us for grams. So to go from moles to grams, we're going to use the molar mass. So one mole 
of magnesium. If I look up magnesium on the periodic table, you'll see it's 24.31 grams of magnesium. So my moles of magnesium will cancel and I get 32.1037. Let's see, I have two significant figures here. My final answer should also have two. So are we keeping it as 32 or do we round up to 33? We're gonna keep it as 32, 32 grams of magnesium. All right, in this final example, we are again going to be given grams and we're working our way to molecules. Molecules are also particles. So we're going from grams to particles. Okay, now we start with what you're given, 7.50 grams of O2. We're gonna convert that to moles using the molar mass. So the molar mass of O2, um, let's see, for oxygen, there's two of them. Each one is 16, so I get 32 grams. So there's 32 grams of O2 for every one mole of O2. Our next step is to use that mole ratio to go from moles of oxygen to moles of carbon dioxide, all right? And our ratio is two to, remember if there isn't a number, that's a one. So for every two moles of O2, we have one mole of CO2, carbon dioxide. Finally, to go from moles of carbon dioxide to molecules, we're gonna use Avogadro's number. So for every one mole of CO2, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and we're looking at molecules this time. All right. So when I crunch the numbers, I get 7.05 times 10 Oops, that's not the number I get. I get 7.05 and some other stuff too. Uh, 0.0546 times 10 to the 22nd. Three significant figures from left to right. Looking at that fourth number. So my final answer will be 7.05 times 10 to the 22nd. And my units will be molecules of CO2. All right, those are three steps. Again, use the flow chart. Flow chart is your friend. Good luck.